Hey, Mom. Hey, Valerie. What you doing? I'm just sitting here thinking about the word sensory. Sensory? You know, that term's thrown around a lot. So, what do you think people mean when they use the word sensory? You know, it is confusing. The word sensory is used in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And most people mean sensory processing when they use it, don't you think? Yeah, I, I do agree. I totally agree. So, if they use the word sensory and it means sensory processing, how do you explain that to your parents? Well, I explain sensory processing as the way that the nervous system receives information from the senses and allows the child to interact with their world. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's a great definition. Actually, I think I can use that. You know, the other thing that I noticed too is that usually when people think about the senses, they think about the most obvious ones, which are, you know, what they see or what they hear, but right. there's so much more than just sight and hearing. In fact, there are seven senses, and some of them um, most people aren't even aware of. Um, and, you know, actually, and with the uh, current thinking, they are even talking about eight senses. Wow, an eighth sense? An eighth sense. So when I try to explain the senses, I try to sort of divide them up into near senses and then far senses. So there are the near senses are the senses that gather information uh, near on the body. So those are vestibular, tactile, proprioceptive, and interoceptive. Wow. Now those are words that need explaining. Yeah. Yeah, they are words that need explaining. The tactile system is really how the body receives pressure, vibration, um, movement, temperature, and even pain through the skin. So it's receptors in the skin that take in that information. And it's both protects, that system both protects and it discriminates. Oh, so basically it lets you know when something is hot when inspected to be cold. Yeah, so it discriminates, but then you can also see how it protects, right? If you think it's hot, and or maybe if you think it's cold and it's hot. Right, but then also, the tactile system lets you know if something is hard versus soft. Exactly. Another near sense is the vestibular system. How do you explain that one to parents? The vestibular system is the movement sense. This sensory system responds to changes in head, body position, and movement through space. It coordinates movement of the eyes, the head, and the body. The receptors are located in the inner ear. So the vestibular system is important for balance, muscle tone, which is something a lot of people don't realize, planning of movements, and our sense of where our body is at in relationship to gravity. Another thing that people often don't realize. So now how would you explain the proprioceptive system? The proprioceptive system is really the body, is really the body and position sense. So it tells us where our body is, what position it is in. The sensory messages it sends is about the body's position, force of movement, direction of movement and these receptors and this is one that's hard for people to understand but these receptors are in our joints our muscles our tendons and then our ligaments this system is pretty important for body awareness planning of movements and grading movements yeah it's also really important for postural security. Absolutely. So, like the proprioceptive system, there is another system that's now being considered as a primary sensory system. So, we were talking about seven sensory systems. Well, this is the number eight that's being included now in the current thinking. And it's called interoception. And that's the sense of the internal organ function. So, for example, um, like your heart rate. If your heart races, that sense of what that feels like, hunger, and even the sense of whether a child needs to go to the bathroom, if they need to urinate or have a bowel movement. The information comes from the nerve endings in the linings of the different internal organs. It contributes to an internal picture of one's body. So linked to interoception 
is another near sense called the gustatory system. How do you explain that? Emily? The gustatory system is the sense of taste. It perceives flavor when something makes contact with the mouth, such as foods that are sweet, salty, sour, or bitter. It allows the child to discriminate and recognize foods through taste. What about the far senses that you had mentioned, Val? These include vision, hearing, and smelling. Smelling is linked pretty closely to taste. How would you explain that? So they are closely related. The olfactory system is the sense of smell, and it's how we perceive odors. These sensations come in contact with the nose, and then the brain interprets those sensations. Smell works with taste um, by either inhibiting or facilitating taste. So I think we've all woken up in the morning and had the smell of bacon, and somehow when we eat that bacon for breakfast, it tastes just a little bit better because of the smell. I agree. So now there's vision and hearing. They are also far senses because they take in information from a distance. The visual system is the sense of sight. Uh, the receptors are in the eyes and it identifies sights and promotes understanding of what we see. It prepares the body for a response. So you see a dog running towards you, you run. Right, them on. Absolutely right, Valerie. In fact, I did that just this morning. <laughs> Interestingly, the visual system is affected by the vestibular system, and that's the system that interprets movement that we talked about earlier. So a good example of that, I think we've all been to an IMAX theater and had that sense of movement when we've watched the movie. So one system that we haven't talked about is the hearing sense or the auditory system. The receptors are located in the ears. And this system provides information about sound, such as pitch, volume, and tone. Wow. Once again, I realize the body is really amazing. It takes all this information from the world around it, and then it organizes it. And this much sensation coming in, and yet it can take it and interpret it and make it meaningful for the children or for a child. You're right, Valerie. It is amazing. It's so amazing how the brain is able to take in all of this information, select, enhance, inhibit, compare, even associate that information in a constantly changing pattern. Wow, this has been a great talk about sensory processing. So let's see if we can review all the things that we've talked about.